12 doctors are at the cutting edge of their respective fields, given their time to work as a team to diagnose patients. Paul 75 from London. Paul has a swollen, puffy right eye. Negative for conjunctivitis. Referral to Moorfields Eye Hospital. Diagnosis basically inflammation of the eyelid and he, was given topical creams as well as oral antibiotics. Paul gets worried that he won't be able to see at all. Paul Mauritius has worked and lived in the UK for 50 years. Nish the daughter has almost forgotten what he looks like. Dr. Sharon wanted to know what medications he was taking, to make sure. There are no allergic reactions. Dr. Sharon Woney wanted to know if he was doing any self-help treatments. Barbara wanted to know if there were any plants that will cause an allergic reaction. Jonathan wanted to consider his race or origin that causing the problem like sunlight so. Photosensitivity exposure. Stephanie noticed his vitiligo his loss of skin pigment. When comparing from the original picture till now, Sharon Woney zoom into his photo and see texture changes to his skin, which can be a sign of eczema or some inflammatory process to the skin. Professor Ian says how. Much worse he is in the morning. In the night time he felt a lot better. So it could be a blockage major vessel. Lung cancer would be the most common cause, doctors will explore an autoimmune system condition like lupus. Sharon Wong will consider either eczema or some kind of allergic reaction. Ian will check if there is any blockage in the vessel caused by lung cancer. Ian examines the worst condition it could be by talking or communicating to you. He also had him do a CT scan was absolutely fine which showed no evidence of cancer. Dr. Barrett suspects that Paul's swelling could be an autoimmune problem where the body is attacking its own tissues. To investigate she made Paul different sets of blood tests. Connective tissue diseases were negative. Test for more complicated diseases was negative. Dr. Wong will now explore her own theories. She looked at research involving his skin. Dermatology different texture, different distribution on the skin. She starts off by feeling Paul's skin and seeing if there is any dryness. She saw skin saying it was very smooth plus does each mean no eczema is found. Plus it's not itchy. Dr. Wong is taking a biopsy to analyze the cells. Beneath the skin. Wong will now take a small sample from the eye where it is swollen also from the red batch as well. Sample will be taken to the lab. Taking the sample she realized he can leprosy due to the extent of his traveling. His provisional results not yet confirmed from his eyelid showing. Dermis is completely full of granulomas. Each of these little purple dots are inflammatory cells. The diagnosis is varied. The most commonest is sarcoidosis which is a chronic inflammatory condition. She was right about sarcoidosis. Can't be fixed but there are treatments you can use to control. However, she doesn't know what causes it's not life threatening. Judy 71 Kent her illness started back in 2007. Her nausea and sickness have continued ever since. She's experiencing vomiting and can no longer eat proper meals. She has been seen by a lot of doctors and has done many procedures. She has lost about 10 kilos this year. July doctors diagnosed a condition called achalasia where the muscle at the base of the ispohagus don't fully open during swallowing so that food can't pass. Dr. Paul thinks there's a gastrointestinal problem. Dr. Ray is worried that surgery to address her. Problems are quite common mistakes. The structures are not where they are supposed to be. Ray is confident that he says most doctors will look at five possibilities but he focuses on one from the get-go and set out to prove it. Ray uses his model to show what he thinks is going on but the question is can he prove it. Dr. Ray was quite emotional because of how much she has suffered over the years. However, diagnosing vagal injury can still be a very difficult thing to do. 
The vagus carries key messages from the brain to the stomach to control digestion. If the nerve is damaged, these messages might not get through. Ray does a test. This is the catheter that we are going to use. Measuring the acidity of Judy's stomach vagus has been damaged Judy's stomach should will determine whether messages are getting through. If the vagus has been damaged Judy's stomach should be less. Acidic than normal with a pH above 3.5. The results are not what Dr. Shidwari was expecting. The pH was too suggesting that at least this function is preserved. It's set back for Dr. Ray. Ray wants to do more tests that are controlled by the vagus. Polypeptide is the first test which is to stimulate, acidic than normal with a pH above 3.5. The results are not what Dr. Shidwari was expecting. The pH was too suggesting that at least this function is preserved. It's set back for Dr. Ray. Ray wants to do more tests that are controlled by the vagus. Polypeptide is the first test which is to stimulate the pancreas to produce this called pancreatic polypeptide in response to feeding anticipation of the food arriving. If the vagus is damaged, you don't get that rise response to feeding. They made her eat food to test this theory. Then in the next hour they will measure pancreatic polypeptide. The process of digestion releases the carbon-13, which can then be detached in the air. The slower the rise the longer food is taking to leave her stomach. Ray's diagnosis was right there was damage to the vagus so their food can digest quickly. Judy's surgery was a success and she gained weight again.